In today's video, we're going to be having a look at five new features in the 2023.4 update for Home Assistant. Check it out. What's going on guys? I hope you're all doing well. April's here and with it is a brand new Home Assistant release. This month you may notice that the thumbnail for the Home Assistant release is just plain and the reason for that is because this is one of the first months where there's actually no new integrations. So we treated to just new features. In this release we've got features for both power users and standard users. And on the topic of those power users, let's jump straight into my first new feature. Up first we've got what I'd consider to be one of the biggest features of this release and it's macros for templates. If you're a Home Assistant power user or you just make use of lots of different templates or maybe you just dabble with them a little bit, then you're probably well aware of the fact that if you want to write one template and use it somewhere else, then you either just have to copy and paste big sections of it or you just have to keep your own list of individual templates so that you can reuse them. Well, that's where macros come in. You can kind of think of macros as being able to store a set method or a set function of one of your templates and then you can make use of this and reuse it within another template just by referencing it. To support this new feature, Home Assistant now has a custom templates folder which can be used to set and store all of your different macros. Third party integrations available from the Home Assistant community store and other things can also reference this folder so they'll be able to make use of templates within this folder too. Macros aren't the only new feature that templates got in this update. Templating also got some brand new functions, functions such as is hidden entity, areas, break and continue for four loops, and that is four, four loops, four, four loops. And we also got the has value function. If templating and macros and functions and ginger is just all above your head and you really don't care about it, then don't worry because this next feature you probably will care about. Last month we got some brand new tile cards and lots of new entity dialogues and these things really changed the way that Home Assistant looked and felt and they just made it feel more fresh and more modern and this month those changes are continuing. In this release we've got new tile cards and also new dialogues for things like alarm control panels, covers and fans. Tile cards and dialogues for fans and covers are quite cool because there's a few different variants for them. The variant is adjusted based on whatever entities are available for your device. So with a fan, you might have a fan that's adjustable by a set percentage, and this percentage controls how fast the fans go in. Or you might have set speed modes where you press a different button and it will change the mode that the fan's in. So based on whichever type of entity you have, you'll get the relevant tile card and the relevant dialogue. The same sort of thing happens with covers. If you've got a cover that's either open or closed or on and off, or if it's one that's adjustable by a percentage or a set tilt, then you'll see a different card and a different dialogue based on those. The alarm control panel is by far one of the best looking new dialogues that we've received. It's got a really sleek animation and visually it just looks really nice. If you haven't already got an alarm system set up within Home Assistant, then I'd definitely recommend playing around with one of those projects and trying out this brand new entity dialogue. Carrying on with my third feature, and we've got the sun. And yes, you did hear correctly, the sun. The power of the sun in the palm of my hand. In this release, Home Assistant have added the sun or rather they've updated the sun integration. So the sun is now visualized as a device, kind of like the moon if you make use of that integration. But using this, you can now make use of some sensors and if you make use of the sun in any of your automations, it's now just gonna be easier to reference as you can directly reference any of these new sensors and you don't have to manually create all of those different attributes using templates or other kinds of lookups. Moving on with my fourth feature and I think this one has been present in the last update and the update before and probably the update before but it's Reolink. Starkiller OG has been absolutely killing it with the brand new Reolink integration and if you make use of the Reolink doorbell you can now get this into your home assistant and make use of all of the new sensors and all of the things local. Over the course of the last few releases this integration has got better and better and now you can pretty much do everything you'd ever need to do with any of your Reolink devices all directly within Home Assistant. Wrapping this all up then with my fifth feature, and this one isn't a feature, but it's just an overall big improvement for Home Assistant. And it's one of those now that has become so big that 
You probably don't notice it as much because of all of the undergoings and things that happen, but it's all of the new improvements to the database by Bdraco. Once again, Bdraco has been grinding away at the Home Assistant database, refactoring things here and there, and just chipping away at things in general, just squeezing all of the juice and speed out of bits wherever he can. All of these changes are just going to improve the way Home Assistant runs and operates, it's going to improve the read and write, and then just in general, we're just going to get better performance. If you still make use of Home Assistant on an SD card, I can guarantee that you're going to have a better time now than what you would have if you were running Home Assistant on an SD card a few years ago. And there we go guys, that's been 5 new features in the 2023.4 update. If you have enjoyed this video then don't forget to drop me a like, and if you're not already, hit that subscribe button and ding dong the notification bell, you'll then be alerted to any future video that I do. As always, a massive thank you to these awesome dudes. These awesome dudes are my Patreons, and if you're interested in helping support my channel, which in turn allows me to create content like this, then you'll find a link to my Patreon in the description below. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.